Hey, welcome back everybody. It's MJ from Just Plain Fun. So I got a bit of an unusual order recently where there's a gentleman over in Holland that needs 25 Y adjusting levers or what we commonly refer to as yokes. And if you're not familiar with that, we're referring to this portion right here that the brass adjustment knob connects to. And that's what is going to move your blade forward and aft in order to help you control the, the size of your cut. So being a parts guy, of course, part of my mission is to help educate folks so that y'all know what you need in order to make sure that you're getting the right part that's going to fit on your plane. And so this is an older frog right here. This is going to be a, actually a type 6 alpha. If you have seen my type study videos, you'll know by that nib right there. Um, but if you look at it, you can see that that yoke is a little beefier. That's a little thicker than, say some of the later ones. They're both the arms and the top portion here on the older one is going to be a little thicker. And then later on, it actually got even just a tiny bit thinner on the later ones as being the OG style frog that would be type 16 and later. So not only was the yoke itself thicker, beefier, but also the pin as well. So this is going to be the older style pin and you can see that it's a little little thicker there versus the later one. You don't even need to mic check that to be able to see the difference there. So even though the size of the pin shrunk, the size of the hole did not shrink as much. And so you still have a little bit wider hole. Um, it did get a little bit smaller. But what you end up with is on your older style, with that thicker pin to match the hole, you're not going to have as much loose play there as you do on your later ones where you're going to have more because again the pin is smaller and the hole did not shrink by as much so you get a little bit more lateral movement there but the main takeaway there is if you happen to need to order a new yoke either you got a plane and it wasn't there or maybe you have one and the one of the arms is broken off just make sure that you're you know trying your best to order the right one that's going to fit best on your plane. You can see somewhere we're going to have these casting marks here like 101 and then your type 8s will even have a B casting on them. I don't have one of those handy or I'd show it to you but just know that there is some some variance there. And speaking of which this is a size number two and then a number eight here and as you can see the yokes are the same size on those so two through eight for your standard bench planes are all going to be the same size. As a matter of fact, your 10s, 10 and a half, ones like that are going to be the same size yoke as well. The only one for your traditional, typical bench planes that's going to be the outlier is going to be your number one. And that one is a bit smaller there. So that one is not interchangeable with the rest. And then one of the main other things that I really wanted to cover in this video I'm going to talk about some other stuff that hopefully you guys will find helpful. But the main thing is how to remove the yoke. And it is very, very simple. And however you need to commit this to memory in case you ever need to do it, the pin comes out. It has to come out from left to right as the plane sits. Like as you would employ the plane, as you would use it, the pin is going to come out from left to right. And that's the only way it'll come out because it's slightly tapered. So all you need to do this job is going to be a Stanley hammer. I'm not responsible for anything that happens if you don't use authentic Stanley tools when you're taking apart a Stanley plane. And then a Stanley punch. So it's very, very important. You don't want to be messing around and using some Harbor Freight stuff to try to take your frog apart. The thing could, could spontaneously combust or something. You probably can't see that that well, but you get the idea. Remember, we're going from left to right as the plane is employed. And y'all will have to forgive my editing skills. I don't know how to silence that. So you get to hear my hammer smashing. So, but you get the idea. You just pop that pin out again. It's tapered. And so you just go ahead and make sure that it's punched through far enough so that you can get your yoke out or your Y adjusting lever, as Stanley called it. And then you'll want to go ahead and take that pin the rest of the way out. And you want to be super careful when you're putting it back in too, because remember this is cast iron. And so if you hit it wrong, you're going to potentially destroy your frog. And that would be bad because then you'd have to buy a new one from me. 
but the pen does go back in and the yoke goes back in the exact opposite of how you took it out you can maybe even use a larger punch in order to do that to you know give you a better footing or a more solid area surface area to hit and since we're talking about why adjusting levers aka yokes on the frogs we might as well go ahead and talk about backlash while we're at it if you've never heard the term backlash before this is what it refers to when you're moving your brass adjusting net forward or back in order to raise or lower the iron that free space right there that free move movement where the blade is not actually going anywhere that is what is referred to as backlash oh and just a quick psa just so i don't get uh give anybody the wrong idea these frogs that i'm using to take the yolks from do all have something wrong with them. I mean, these frogs have more issues than popular woodworking magazine. So no serviceable parts are being harmed during the cannibalization process. And now we're back to talking about backlash. So if you talk to a bunch of different hand plane guys, you'll get different feedback on what it is that causes backlash and then what it is that you can do, if anything, that you can do about it. So my personal experience or my personal take on this is there are a couple of contributing factors that are going to affect backlash. One is going to be the serviceability and the wear on your brass adjustment knob or adjusting nut as Stanley called it in the original diagram. So as you can see, this one has plenty of life down here on the end as opposed to this one that is plenty worn. And so the space here between the end of it, the bottom of it, if you will, and the top, which you can see that's worn as well, that space has been elongated, which means there's going to be more room for the yoke to move in between there. So just for demonstration purposes, for the visual learners among us, you can see how much play there is in that yoke between those two sections there on that really worn one versus the amount of play here. And so it might not seem like much, but when you're talking about backlash and you're talking about an eighth of a turn versus a half a turn, that's pretty much the essence of what backlash is all about. And another contributing factor, I'm not saying it's the V contributing factor, but another contributing factor is going to be how worn the tip of your Y adjusting lever is. And so, and I've actually seen these that have been user modified before as well, but how worn that is. And for all I know, when it was cast, you know, they might have been cast in different sizes. But the thickness right here for when that engages your chip breaker is absolutely going to be a contributing factor for, you know, how much play you have in there for when that thing engages to move your blade forward and aft. And then one more contributing factor, and this probably isn't even all of them, is going to be the size of your opening on your chip breaker. So, and again, these can be user modified sometimes. Somebody might have borrowed it to put it on another plane or adjust it for whatever reason. And so the, the width of that opening is going to have a bearing as well. So now we're going to look at this on an actual plane. And this is really geared more for the beginners. You know, you guys that are long in the tooth that already know all this stuff, you can just feel free to, you know, fast forward or move on to a, a more important YouTube video in your life. But you can see there as I'm moving that, that Y lever or the yoke is having to move up and down in order to engage the chip breaker in order to make the blade move. And another factor to consider if you've upgraded to a Hawk iron or some other aftermarket iron and chip breaker because you like the thicker iron, which I mean, let's face it, they hold an edge longer, which is pretty awesome. If you've done that, then that is going to affect your backlash as well because with that thicker chip breaker, you can see, and the thicker iron, you can see that it extends out further from the frog bed there. And so now you're gonna have just a tiny bit more play because it's not allowed to sit as far back. And so now you've actually just potentially increased the amount of backlash that you have by introducing that thicker iron and or thicker chip breaker to your plane. So as far as what you can do about it, if backlash is really annoying to you and you don't like it, then what you can do is take a look at your brass. And if your adjusting nut is really worn like this one, then you can replace it with one that is not as worn. 
And then of course, same thing with your chip breaker. You might consider replacing your chip breaker to make sure that you have one with an opening that is nice and tight, nice and small. And then last and not least, you can look at your Y adjusting lever, AKA yoke, and you can try to get one that still has the full, you know, factory width there in order to cut that, cut down on that backlash. I mean, that's really what we're, what we're going for. Again, some people it bothers more than others. It's not really an issue for me, but if you're the kind of person that wants a nice tight plane so that you can make those really fine adjustments in order to take thinner shavings with less effort, then I'm all for it. And uh, if you need any of those parts, obviously let me know. But really the main takeaway here and what I want y'all to leave this with is that everyone who has subscribed to my channel, you guys rock and I love you all. And if you convince more people to subscribe, then I'm going to love you even more than I already do. So as always, let me know what questions y'all have about the Y adjusting levers or yokes and let me know what your experience has been. You know, what have you done in order to rid yourself of backlash? I'll see you all around.